first thing is outdated electronics. This is kind of like a no-brainer. If you have an old TV, if an old laptop, an old desktop, and I do say laptop and desktop because some people do have their little office space in their living room, so that's why I'm mentioning it like we do. So anyways, what is the point of having outdated electronics in your living room. You're not getting any use out of them and they're taking up a ton of space. So it's best to get rid of them as soon as possible. If you have Apple products, old Apple products, you can bring them to Apple. We have done that numerous times. Sometimes they give you store credit. If the item is too old, then they won't give you store credit, but they will recycle them properly for you. Number two is excessive throw pillows. I had been through my throw pillow situation when it came to my bedroom, but when it comes to the living room, I knew better. And we only have one throw pillow for our couch. I know some people overdo it, and then you have to move all the pillows to sit on the couch. Believe it or not, those are taking up unnecessary space. I mean, if you like it, then do you. But for those of you that are sick and tired of throwing your throw pillows on the floor, then just maybe it's time to think about decluttering some of your throw pillows. I personally don't feel that a couch needs to be filled with throw pillows to the point where you can't even see the couch. So again, everybody is different, but when it comes to saving space and when it comes to things you don't really need in the living room, the pillow situation is one of them. Number three is non-functional decor items. This is another thing that I made a huge mistake on. I had a ton of decor items in my first apartment and I know I talk about it all the time, but we do have new viewers that don't watch my old videos. I used to have a lot of vases around, a lot of plants. I used to have some paintings inside the fireplace, like, cause the fireplace was not usable. So the painting would be inside with a plant and then another little statue. I overdid it. And most of those items were non-functional decor items. so meaning that they just sit there. So when it came to cleaning, I had to take all of those decor items, put them in the middle, dust them all off or wipe them down with like a bucket of water, wipe them all down and it was so tedious. So now I will say I'm a little bit more aware when it comes to what we bring into the house for decor. For this apartment, we don't have any decor. The only thing I own is like a little pumpkin that I put out right when September comes and then I put it away at the end of November because I do love fall, but that's about it. We have like a ceramic pumpkin and that's it. And that goes in the middle of the table. Other than that, we don't have any decor items. Now I'm not saying I am against, fully against decor items. I do think some of them liven up the place, but it's when you get excessive with it. It's when, you know, a house is filled with so many decor items that that's all you see. And I can just imagine the amount of dust that collects with them and then cleaning them. It's like you have to cater a full day to just cleaning your decor items. Just be careful on how much decor you place in your living room. It could be wasting time for you when it comes to cleaning and also wasting a ton of space that you could be utilizing. Number four is worn out in uncomfortable furniture. Again, something I have dealt with, I had a brown couch. Those of you that watch my videos from the beginning, um, you are very familiar with this couch. I hated that couch so much. I never really talked about it on how much I hated it because I was a little bit embarrassed with the money I spent and I thought I was getting a good deal, but I really wasn't. So fast forward to years later, I did end up donating it to someone that really needed it and I never looked back. It was very uncomfortable for me at least and the color was just not my style and it was just one of those furniture pieces that I wish I never purchased. So when it came to that particular situation, I learned a lot from it. And when we purchased our couch that we have right now, we made sure that it was comfy. We made sure that the color we really liked and the material, the material was going to outlast having a cat and with us always sitting on it, with guests sitting on it. So this couch is very durable. It was pricey, so you get what you pay for. But when it came to the other couch, I learned that looks aren't everything. You have to like do your research and you have to make sure you are getting what you need and want, if that makes any sense. With furniture, I know some people tend to keep furniture that's ripped or furniture that's not comfortable. There are so many great like 
outlets online where you can either resell, donate, and you can find something that you're looking for, something that's more you, something that's not ripped, something that's not uncomfortable and not crazy overpriced. Facebook market is a great place to look, um, also to sell. So if you have a lot of furniture in your living room, that is uncomfortable to you. Again, everybody's different. So what you find uncomfortable, someone might find comfortable. So you can resell your uncomfortable furniture and you can also give away your worn out furniture. There are some people that will fix it, reupholster chairs and things like that. So there are so many ways to get rid of furniture like this nowadays. All you have to do is just snap a picture and put it online. Or you can call again the um, garbage truck to come pick it up. I know some furniture is heavy, so try to get some family members to help you out when it comes to decluttering furniture. I know for myself, when I moved out of my first apartment, when it came to moving this bed and the frame and stuff, it was fairly heavy. So if you do want to get rid of some furniture in your living room, it's taking up unnecessary space or it's just furniture that you don't really like anymore, try your best to find help to get rid of it if it is heavy. If it's not heavy, then you can definitely get rid of it yourself. It's, again, there's so many outlets online, whether you want to make some extra cash or you just want to spruce up your living room, like to clear out some old furniture that you've been meaning to get rid of. And for this one, I'm not just talking about the living room. Wherever you keep furniture that is uncomfortable, that is worn out, whether it is your attic, your garage, your bedroom, now is the time to get rid of it. So you can either make some extra cash or have some more space in your home or apartment. Number five is something that I feel like everyone is gonna come at me for this, but I feel like a lot of us millennials have dealt with seeing these things around and I don't know a millennial that purchases any of this stuff. But again, no hate on anybody, but this is the one thing that you don't really need in your living room and you could be saving yourself a ton of space if you don't have it. And that is too many knickknacks. So this does fall under decor, but I know a lot of people, like especially my mom, I love my mom to death. If you're watching mom, I am so sorry. I am calling you out. But the knickknacks, my mother loves knickknacks. And I think that's around that era. She has a lot of killer whale knickknacks. Um, she has a lot of like witchy wizard knickknacks. That's like her vibe, but she tends to overdo it with the knickknacks. Again, I know everybody's different, but I do think of like cleaning them. I remember actually cleaning them. I remember she would grab a bucket of water and a little bit of pine salt and we would have to wipe everything down on the weekends. And uh, it wasn't even just her, it was other family members too. So I think I'm a little traumatized when it comes to knickknacks. For anyone that has dealt with knickknacks growing up, let me know down below, like, do you own them or do you not own them because of like your parents or your grandparents? Anyways, I feel like you know, too many knickknacks. It's okay to have some here and there, but too many, like to have a dedicated space for all of them. Like too many can cause your living room to look very, very cluttered. And it's just one of those things you technically don't need because it's one of those like non-functional decor items. It's just sitting there. I do feel so weird talking about it because I feel like I'm going to get canceled because everybody, I feel like a lot of people like knickknacks. Number six is something that I also grew up with seeing. I feel like a lot of you have seen this too and that is unused exercise equipment. Now, I am not perfect because inside that closet, we do have a treadmill and I've been wanting to donate it to my mother because we do go to the actual gym. So that is something that we don't really need, but my partner is not ready to part ways with it. So one day we will get rid of that treadmill. I understand too, when you live with someone, if you wanna get rid of it and that person doesn't, you're in like a stance. It is hard, but if you aren't getting rid of it anytime soon, try to hide it. Like put it in the attic, put it in the garage or somewhere where it's not in the living room, basically as a coat rack. So I've seen treadmills that turn into a coat rack. I've seen like weights turn into 
um, a shoe organizer, like you put your shoes on top of it, and the list goes on and on. So if you have a treadmill in your living room right now, and it is dusty, and it is folded up in the corner, and you have a lot of coats on it, then maybe now it is the time to get rid of it. it or if you're gonna use it, then put it out, undust it, get rid of the coats, and try to make a schedule with using it. Like I said, for hours, we go to the gym, so I don't really use that treadmill anymore, but I did find a way to hide it un until my partner is ready to get rid of it. So if you, again, live with someone else that doesn't wanna get rid of it, but you want to, try your best to hide it until they come to their senses. Number seven is a no-brainer, and that is unread books or unread magazines, or even read magazines or read books. Whatever you do not want to read anymore, or you've already read, or you haven't read, it's time to get rid of the books, magazines. It's time to donate them to your local library or local schools. They can get better use out of it than sitting in your living room. Number eight is excessive cords and cables. Every house that I have been to, again, not judging, but every house that I have ever been to, including my apartment, the amount of cables and cords that are around is insane. And I really thought with this day and age that we were be done with cables and cords, but we're not even close. Everything still comes with a wire. Unfortunately, the best thing that we can all do is to try to declutter the ones that we are not using. That way your cables don't look like a bunch of snakes hanging out. So I don't wanna go on and on with this because it is something that I feel like we all are dealing with and we also have dealt with in the past too. So like I said, the best thing to do is to go through the wires that you're not using. If you do use certain wires like your iPhone charger or your laptop charger, they don't need to be plugged in all the time where your living room will look like, again, a bunch of snakes around. Um, so the best thing to do is to find ways to hide your wires. I found a way when it comes to my partner's wires, he's the one that has the most amount of wires because he has a lot more gear than I do when it comes to recording. So I found a little bit of a solution and that is, what is this called, like a pla those plastic drawers. I just grabbed it from Target and all of his wires are in there. They're not the neatest in there because he does go through his wires every day, but I always make sure that I put the wires back after he leaves for work. So that way there's not a bunch of wires lying around the living room and making the place look super cluttered. Number nine is something I kind of already talked about, but it does deserve its own number, and that is broken items. Whether it is the leg on one of your couches, if it's broken, try to fix it. If you cannot fix it and it is not fixable, time to replace it, you know, get rid of it and replace it. Same thing goes for your TV. It is, if it's broken, time to replace it. If your rug is ripped, replace it or fix it. So those are things that can make your living room look a little bit tacky. And also it can put a damper on your space, like how you feel about your space, if that makes any sense. There are quite a few things that I personally have gotten rid of due to certain items being broken. Same thing with living here. I've gotten rid of quite a few items that were broken that were non-fixable and replaced them if I wanted to replace th that item. But sometimes I came to the realization that, you know, that item's broken, I don't really need to replace it. So it's kind of like a reminder of, all right, this item is broken. Do I really need to replace it or am I okay with just getting rid of it and not having it again? So I feel like getting rid of broken things helps the upkeep of your living room and it makes you feel a lot better about your living space. And also when you have guests come over. I don't know about you guys, but like I remember back in the day, if something was broken, I felt embarrassed when I had my family members come over because I never wanted to make others feel uncomfortable. But in reality, I was the one feeling uncomfortable due to the, the amount of broken things that I had in the house. So now I don't hesitate when it comes to either fixing a broken item or getting rid of it if it's non-fixable. And the last thing that I'm gonna mention, which is number 10, and this is a little controversial. I, I know I'm probably gonna get hate for this because I am a minimalist and I am that type of person that hates these items, and that is a coffee table. I feel like this is the one item you don't really need. I feel like for us, it would take up so much unnecessary space. And I do remember when I was a kid, bumping into my mom's coffee table, um, my other family members, their coffee tables, constantly stubbing my toe on them. So you had your couches on the side, 
you had the table in the middle, then the TV console, and it was like a maze in the living room. I think coffee tables are a huge waste of money. Again, this is my opinion. Some of you might get use out of them, and again, we are all different but I do feel like you can save yourself a ton of space with not having a coffee table, and it makes cleaning a breeze, when, especially when it comes to vacuuming. I used to hate, again, we had chores back in the day as a kid, and I used to hate moving the coffee table in order to vacuum and then moving the coffee table back. Now, all I have to do is vacuum. I don't have to move anything. Not even the couches because my vacuum just goes right under the couch. So when it comes to most coffee tables, you do have to move them to clean and then you also have to wipe them down. You have to buy coasters. So when people do put their drinks on the coffee table, they don't ruin the coffee table. And then sometimes you have guests that put their feet on the coffee table. I just think of coffee tables as like a thing of the past. So it's up to you, you guys, if you wanna get rid of yours. But, but I do feel like you can save yourself not even just time, but a ton of space in your living room. On that note, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next one.